What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. My name is Chris. That's Mike. <laughs> yes, it is. What's going on, Chris? Nothing much, man. We're at Parnassus, episode 8 of Nosferatu. Yes. We're getting towards the end. This, Mike, was a pretty good episode. I enjoyed this episode. Yeah. What would you think? Uh, another good one. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, abuse of drinking and drugs in this uh, from Maggie and Vic, which I don't like to see from both of those characters. But... Um, Hey, sometimes you got to get low before you can get high, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, no, another another good one. Um, so let's uh, let's kind of get right into it. Let's I jump mean, into it. Well, she gets when, into RISD, bro. She gets into RISD. She gets into um, Maggie, <laughs> Maggie, um, Maggie's Scrabble tiles find her, which was kind of cool. Yeah, that that happened. Uh, I just, you know, so I've been I've been kind of picking apart the 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 family uh, domestic stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's been getting good. Uh, she, she gets in the RISD. Linda, her mom can't deal with it. You know, I thought that was a cool scene when her friend Willow comes in and, and sees her on the floor. She's like, Oh my God, what's the matter? And then she says it and she's like, Oh, it's yeah. so great. Have a party. They have a party. Her dad shows up. And yeah. I like when they went outside and he's like, Oh, I want to be like her when I grow up, you know, like, yeah. and then, you know, and the mom, obviously we knew that's where the mom was going to go and she was going to be all upset and everything. But you know, uh, very, very, very flowed very nicely this episode because Bing trying to make up for past faux pot, you know, decides he's gonna kidnap Vic, but but very smart in leaving that that stuff out and letting yeah. the mom find it. You know, yeah. that was I guess that was part of his plan was hoping that and then he would she would run out and he could grab her, which is exactly well. What did happened. he did he did he plan to to leave that out? Or it was it he was going through her shit and then Bing the he Bing heard the mom. Oh, know? maybe I just assumed like either either way. I mean, Vic gets gets. Yeah, caught I out. just assumed okay. that that fell because it, it fell right into his little grubby paws. You know, he's walking up the staircase and he hits Vic's picture. Oh with yeah, his, yeah, yeah, yeah. The class. So yeah, no, Bic, he, uh, uh, Bic. Bing is um he's he's a super creepy dude and there were a lot of. The scene with when he obviously he, he ends up kidnapping Vic, but the scene when he when Vic is in the basement in the chair and he's like like s smelling her and like laying on her chest and he's everything. A predator. He's he's super super he's, creepy, dude. He's got super. don't forget, dude. He raped his mom and then yeah. he and he yeah. raped the other woman and 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 then killed. Talking him. about how the flesh was soft, like you know yeah. this was soft like my mother's and stuff. Dude's but messed up, man. He says when, the best he's ever felt is when he killed his parents like you yeah know? yeah so he admitted all that stuff which i'm sure you know vic kind of already had the idea well, obviously right yeah um would you um would you think of how vic is trying to manipulate bing no perfect i mean that's exactly right? what she needs to do that he's his soft spot is christmas land obviously we find out i mean we kind of knew but we, we yeah. get a confirmation as to why christmas land means so much he thinks christmas mm -hmm. every, you know every day is great for him also the his special um, I forgot what he said. Special feelings or something, or yeah, or best feelings. His or something best like feelings. That. So Vic, you know, Vic uses Vic's very smart and very quick on her feet, considering she's been drugged that whole and, time, and exactly. it kept going back, which it just shows you a passage of time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is she to manipulate her. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, she's like, you know, he told me this, which was true. It's it was not, true. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's it's not false. He, she wasn't yeah. lying. You know, yeah. but but you know, but then we also find out exactly why. We never we never knew that. You know, we just knew that he wanted her. Either he wanted her. De I thought he wanted her dead, but then he says you can come to you know. And then when they meet, finally he's like, oh, I want you to come. Now we know why to be the mother of his children. So yeah, in that so you know, Manx goes in there. Well, we could jump to Manx in a sec because I have some stuff I want to talk about. Some spoiler stuff, not spoiler, but like Easter egg stuff with Manx. Yeah, we'll get back to him in a second. But yeah, so Maggie going on a bender tries to call her mom you know and we mom's find out not having her past yeah mm -hmm. her mom's not um i mean maggie really isn't ready to, to be in that kind of uh environment with the mother saying that you know you gotta make sure we go to church and well she's uh, just because she understood no, because no she, girls not and, for nothing not for yeah. nothing i mean i don't agree with you know i mean let let her be with who she wants to be with but she does under she does like know their daughter then like she knows her daughter like i know you're a piece of crap and you and you're gonna get into some shit the same thing joe knew you yeah. know, but she's an addict and we know it. Um, but like you said earlier, the Scrabble tiles find her and it's like, yeah, that's what's that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So she found, she found, you know, where's the bike and, you know, and so, yeah, and, and Vic finds her too, which was, uh, 
you know, the poor girl's laying on in between dumpsters on a on a mattress in front of this bar or this whatever. That was it is. crazy though, having to throw up and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean that's good. They're back. I think they're back. They're I think they're ready to mm-hmm. battle. Um, but uh, going back to the mom and the domestic stuff real quick, I enjoyed that conversation with the mom too. First, I enjoyed the conversation they had in the bedroom, where the mm-hmm. mom's like, "If you're on the mic, because that's that's what you do as a parent. You have you, there, there's no other recourse but to say those things to to mm-hmm. your kid, like." What else are you gonna say? You're under my roof. These are my rules. This is for your own good. It's that's everything that you would say to your kid because in those moments you're so angry and you don't want to lose your kid. You have to. You have to. But then obviously, and the family are also fighting those demons themselves. The father correct, has yeah. drinks and yeah. and Vic has the bottle of vodka. So it's just one of those. Yeah, I agree totally. That's those are the kind of um, unfortunate uh, conversations you might one day have to have right. um, with with uh, a child or whatever. But, so yeah, how about that fucking throwing the bottle and all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, that was great. Just, but then the yeah. conversation after the fact, when she finds out that the bike's still at the house, mm-hmm. she, you know, she calls her mom a coward. She's like, you're not stupid. She's like, you're just yeah. a coward. You're afraid to be alone. And and she's not wrong. And the mom understands that. She like breaks down. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's sad because it, it gives us the questions about why, um, Linda was always uh, doubting her uh, her ability to go to school and to get into college and, and not just becoming what she is and just cleaning the houses and all this kind of stuff. You, so, know, you know what's crazy is the casting gives on us these, a reason. Right, and the, the, the casting of her parents are really good because they're, I mean, you know, her parents are our age, basically. You mm. know, and and they had Vic when they were super young. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you had a kid when you're 16, you know, when you when you're in your late 30s, you know, 40s, like, yeah, that's that's what, you know, because they're, they're not, you know, her parents aren't they don't look like older people, obviously, you know, like the yeah. mom looks almost like she could be her daughter's age even. You know what I mean? It's like because she's a young person. And, and I just think the casting was really good on that, you know. Um, and then, yeah, so she says all that. She gets her bike back. And uh, yeah, she and like you said, she went to go find Vic. I mean uh, Maggie. Um, I'm glad that that happened. Um, you know, I hope Maggie. I hope she pulls Maggie out of it, and now they they get to battle to 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 do that. You know, I think it's set up for that. Yeah, I, it's definitely. I mean, it's one of those things. Now she, it's kind of like um, she knows Joe's gone. She remember she called into the Scrabble tile herself, like where's Joe dead. or he's dead. You know, so so she knows um, just the same way she wanted to. Um, you know, get get Vic into into helping her. It's now it's it, the the roles are reversed. So yeah, I think totally they're gonna you know go uh, and and take care of business. But mm-hmm. um, let's talk about the title of the uh, like you said, the title of the episode is Parnassus, which is um, the Enscape for Abe, right? You said his name was Abe. Yeah, the steampunk the, kind of guy. His name's Abe. That's his bar owner. That's his or... inscape, his inner landscape, right? <laughs> Yeah, and so he it wouldn't be a bad one to have, right? Right. So, but what's so he's created this for other creatives. So Manx walks into this bar, and everyone else clears out. But the the cool thing is, we got to see some really cool, interesting things. So some of the yeah. characters that we get to see are obviously Pennywise, you know, yeah. from the It novels and movies and TV series, you know, TV movie thing and. You know, obviously, Red Balloon, that guy, which is which is interesting because it's his father's creation. So, yeah, you know what I mean? It, you know, Joe Hill's father is Stephen King. If you didn't know that, now you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Pennywise is a creation of Stephen King, which, by the way, the sec- the sequel's coming out pretty soon. Yeah. For, the, for that. that. That first one was good. I like that. The yeah, no, they were great. Sick. Um, but I'm also pretty partial to the one with John Ritter from the from the 80s. From, yeah. You know, like that was good, yeah. too. Um, or the early '90s. Anyway, there's another. So, so there's that character, right? And and don't mm-hmm. forget, in the first episode, we did see there was a map. When he opens the map, you did see something that said Pennywise's Circus, and it was close to where Derry would be. Oh, on well, that oh, map, okay. and Derry is where the It saga takes place. Yeah. So, um, but then you also have a character named Lloyd, who uh, was like the uh, uh, bartender from The Shining. You know, and again, this is, you know, it's he has him in the same suit. He's like in the same suit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just younger. These look like younger, younger versions of them. And by younger, there's also it looks what appears to be a younger Freddy Krueger, which makes perfect sense because Freddy Krueger. Think about it, dude. The whole Freddy Krueger thing could just be him bringing kids into his inscape. 
It's very true. That dream world <laughs> that we that all the movies take place in, like that is yeah. an inscape, right? Yeah. Although he's not burnt, but he is sporting that, you know, iconic sweater. It's like a little know? homage to some of these other horror. Yeah, classics and it's basically like opening. It's a possibility of like possibly opening up this world for the TV show. Like, look at look what the possibilities are. Look what we could happen. Now there were some other ones that um, not too sure about. You know, ones like uh, I mean, there was a character in the in the credits called steampunk okay. um you know i think i think it's like the green-haired woman that we saw um you know wearing a leather outfit and she had big hoop earrings but then there's also possibly the tall man from the phantasm movies a little okay. younger again you know what i mean um so oh, and before all that stuff happened i don't know if you're into those movies or remember those but those are pretty sick also there's another thing that um a cable knit sweater with woman wearing she's wearing a blonde hair no she's wearing cable knit sweater she had blonde hair <laughs> could possibly be carrie's mom okay so yeah it's that's, you know what uh, i mean yeah so there's so so it's there's cool. so there's a bunch of different things you know again mm -hmm. and, and if you guys you know look more into that or whatever let us know but you know just from the little bit of research i did i think that's yeah, that's no, it's something. interesting. So that's just, I just think it's really cool. And also, Mike, we're eight, April, eight episodes in, and I realize this is this is taking place in the 90s. Is well, it? Possibly the early 2000s. Because all of their cell phones. That's, yeah, that's I've true. noticed, that's I, true. I thought at first it was just, like, I Maggie kinda, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I thought that too with But Maggie. then, no, but then the mom, the dad, even, even uh, Vic... Their cell phones are all flip phones. So that's got to be like the early 2000s, I think. Uh, so I think that's I mean, when this is taking place, man. Yeah, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be modern, um, the know? modern times. Because you would think the rich kids, they'd all have, you know, smartphones or iPhones mm. or whatever. So mm. I don't know. Anyway, that was something I noticed. Um, again, cinematography, you know, you know, on point. Um, I really enjoyed Vic this episode. She's, you know, I feel like, you know... It, you feel for her, man. You're like, you want her. Like, she really, wow, she got into RISD. Great. That she's going to go away. She's going to have a normal life. But you, we know, excuse me, that's, that's not, not Yeah, that's not necessarily going to be the case. I yeah. also like, also when he's in the bar talking to, um, there's a couple other things too, like we did. Like I said, we earlier, we found out he wants her to be his wife. Not his wife. We find out he wants Vic to be the mother of his children. His children yeah. need a mother. Yeah. If not, he's going to feed them, feed her to them. But yeah. he also mentions that he was married. Now, that wasn't Jolene, though. And the guy makes... I don't think that was... He didn't marry Jolene. What he did was... He, he, he Obviously, he made her go crazy. And the guy yeah. the guy called him on it. He's like, oh, or, or you could just make her go crazy like you did with Jolene. Yeah. Right? He's talking about Jolene's ass and how it looked in her uniform. You know? And, and, but I, and he's like, oh, yeah, but your wife. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, well, one was whatever. I forget what he said, but he made a comment. Uh, Manx made a comment about his wife and Jolene. Well, that's why I was thinking, like I said last week, about the Millie Manx, that there was something about her. Maybe that is his legitimate kid with another woman. That okay, we never, you know what? You now, know? I, didn't, I forgot about our argument. Yeah, that that could be. You're, yeah. you're right. That You know what? That might be. Um, I be. also like that he had a cup of hot chocolate. And then he comes he in and, and the and the jukebox goes to. Oh, Christmas that was pretty cool. He's like, oh, I should have known you and this yeah. jingle jangle bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I liked it. I I was I really enjoy seeing the inscape stuff and now seeing these these potential other, you know, bad creatives, you know, in the world having it all linked together like that. That that's really interesting. I'm really because these those are some of my favorite monster slash villains from yeah. from movies and in and, and, and literature so that's really cool so i'm i'm yeah. thinking and of course it's it's cool that it's it's mostly like based off his dad's work which is great because he's linking the universes which which hey why the hell not you know um yeah. i love it i oh, love absolutely. it you know absolutely. and so two hour season finale we are getting a season two which is good to yes. hear so that yes. happened um you know happy to hear that right yeah, no, good news. Uh, you know, good news on all fronts. I mean, uh, like you said, we're getting the two hours, so that's kind of cool. Um, so it's two episodes in one, um, really. So we're gonna uh, have all that for you, obviously, after um, after that premieres. 
Uh, anything else that you, I mean, wanted to say before we wrap it up? I mean, really, I just wrote Bing. Bing was like super creepy for me. Bing's that was a just crazy my big bastard, thing. man. Yeah. Um, he's a great actor. And one thing about about him too, I forgot his name exactly, but he's going to be in. Um, I think he's playing one of the Skeksis in. Uh, oh, it's awesome. Um, Dark Crystal. The Dark Crystal. Ooh, the Dark I cannot Crystal. wait for that, so, Mikey. I'm so yeah. psyched for that, dude. It looks think- so good. Yeah, I love he's... Dark Crystal. You don't understand, guys. I love it so much. It's my childhood. <laughs> I've seen that movie like 25 times. I love that movie. I yeah. know it by heart. So I'm so looking forward to it. Showed my kids. They're like, that looks weird. I'm like, you're watching it. Yeah, Jim Henson's. <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Friends. It's amazing. It's yeah. And, and the mix of the of what they're doing now looks. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, I know so we might have to do a little he's, review he's on that. Playing, I don't yeah, know. he's playing. Well, he's playing. You know what? The... He was also in um the latest uh Fantastic Beasts movie. Oh, okay. I was watching that with my daughter uh, last weekend, and and I was like, oh yeah, he was like, he was like, he played a ringleader of this like weird macabre okay. circus and stuff, and he that was him. I was like, oh cool, good for him. Yeah, very cool. You know, so all right, so I think uh, I think that's it for yeah, uh, episode it eight, Parnassus. Uh, another good uh, another good one from uh, AMC's new <sighs> series Nosferatu. Yeah, the liking show. the show. We're glad that season two is is. Um, a penciled in there, so we're excited for that. And hey, what, uh, be- um, before we go, Mike, I want to—I just want to uh, uh, put this out there to you guys watching this. So, Wu Assassins, we got a, as of this recording of this, we got it. We got a trailer for it, and it's coming out on Netflix on yeah. August eighth. If you don't know what that is, it's um, uh, Louis Tan, uh, our buddy from Badlands, yes, uh, with a bunch of of other wonderful actors and martial artists, and it's and it's a really cool show. I won't get into too much detail of it. You go watch the trailer; it's a really cool looking show. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that. Uh, hopefully, have Lewis and some of his uh, castmates on. So uh, look forward to that. Also, if you guys, so the 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 new season of the Terror, uh, the Terror Infamy is coming on, and it looks really really cool, like a Japanese internment camp, and it looks like some wacky, ghostly, wicked stuff happening there. Um, I'd like to I'd like to check that out. If you guys want us to do that for the summer. Uh, for the rest of this summer, let us know because um, yeah. that might be something we could watch and we could talk about on this channel because I think that might be really, really cool. I'm into that stuff. And we'll just keep this creepy vibe going during the summer, you know, <laughs> with a little bit of martial arts mixed in. So let us know if you think that the Terror Infamy is something you'd want us to see on this channel too. Um, All right. And uh, that's it, man. Yeah, that's right. So write in the comments section below what you think of uh, episode eight of Nosferatu. We're really enjoying this stuff. So we love to hear from you guys. We love uh, getting there and writing those comments. So let us know what you're thinking. Uh, check us out at Third Person at on all the social media outlets there. You can also go into Google, type in thirdpersonpod.com. It'll bring you right to our channel. Check out our stuff. We had some great interviews if you're Badlands fans, just like Chris said. Um just just great stuff great content we're excited about the summer and these new shows so uh stick with us yep that's it thanks everyone see you for the next episode the finale of nosferatu yes see you next time Peace.